Today we are doing a fishing tutorial. I'm gonna show you everything I know about pike fishing, so it should be a very short video. <laughs> Jokes aside, we're gonna do a pike fishing tutorial. We're on Massisquoi Bay, the Canadian side of Lake Champlain, and it's known for the pike fishing, and anybody who has been following my channel knows I catch a lot of pike out here, and some of them are darn big. So, today we're gonna do a basic 101 of pike fishing, what you need, what I don't bring all too often, how these fish behave and what they're like to catch. So first things first, what you need. I brought it today, a net. You need a net, especially when you are fishing off a kayak because pike are notoriously difficult to handle. Why are they difficult to handle? Anybody who has ever touched one and found this out the hard way knows that their gills, where people normally grab a fish, you know, to hold it up, have like these reverse hooks on the inside of their gills. So if you stick your hands inside their gills, they're getting stuck in there like your hand would get stuck in a snake's mouth where they have these like back-facing teeth on snakes. These things have these back-facing hooks on their gills and I suspect it's to prevent parasites from going up into their gill plates. They also have notoriously sharp teeth, but not sharp like a dog sharp. Sharp like broken glass. Their teeth look like and behave like broken glass in the manner in which they get embedded in your flesh if you happen to make the mistake of sticking your finger in their mouth to try to unhook them. Which brings us to point number two, or whatever we're at now. You need a de-hooker thingy to pinch the hook out and pull it out without getting your hands near their teeth because their teeth are vicious. As far as lures go, I have always found that spoons, Len Thompson, hashtag not an ad, these spoons are just amazingly effective for catching pike. Soft worms, I know they work, but they don't work half as well in my experience as spoons work. Yellow and white with the silver back work the best. There's a spider crawling on my ear. Ah, ah, you won't tell my jacket. Okay. Uh, the red and white ones with the silver back work. The yellow ones with the uh, red diamonds and the gold back work as well. And something I do, I break, I, I clip off one of the trebles and pinch in the barbs because you do not need three trebles with the barbs not pinched in. Yeah, you'll never lose a fish and yeah, you'll never be able to release a fish because it just does more damage to a fish than you ever need to do to catch one. And for the odd fish that you'll lose when you only have two trebles or one treble with the pinched in barb, you're better off losing the fish than, look at this. You're better off losing the fish than causing uh, irreparable harm to a fish that you would otherwise want to release. And the major thing you need, whether you think you do or not, is wire leader. You need wire leader when fishing for pike. These are not like bass. You need wire leader. It's not fair to the fish to fish without wire leader because they will snap the line. If it's not with their teeth, it'll be with their dorsal fins or whatever. You need wire leader. And uh, with all that said, have I forgotten anything? No. Pike tend to be very territorial. So if you have a good spot, if it's not the pike you caught the last time that's there, it'll be another pike. So we're gonna get out here and do this because I'm drifting past my sweet spot. Okay, I'm doing something very dangerous because I'm recording this off my iPhone on a kayak because it's just gonna be so much easier to edit this video when it's on my iPhone as opposed to a GoPro having to Put it onto my computer, then go to Final Cut Pro. This way I can just edit on the toilet. There I said it. Okay, let's do this. First cast, gonna let it sink to the bottom. I like to cast it, let it sink for five seconds and then just bring it back. With a spoon, you have to bring it back at a consistent speed so that it wobbles properly in the water. You bring it back too slow, it's gonna look like a piece of metal. No fish is gonna be interested in it. Bring it back too fast, they're not gonna be able to strike it. And you wanna get either the strike because it looks like an injured minnow and a pike wants to attack it, or just the reflexive strike because you have passed through the pike's territory and it doesn't like what it sees and it goes in for the reflexive attack. It is intended to trigger a response from the fish. One might even be able to call it the ultimate trigger. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on fire today. There's a huge catamaran right behind me. Very beautiful. Okay, let's see what we can get here. In terms of the weather, overcast is always better where the fish don't feel too intimidated to come to the surface of the water, to fall prey to other predators. 
if there's a little ripple in the water, a little wind is good. Too much wind and it turns up too much dirt in the water and you can't really work a lure that requires a visual reaction. And then we just play the fishing game. There are spiders crawling all over me. One other thing, pike prefer, as do most fish, structure. They like to hide in the weeds or natural or unnatural structure. So they can pounce on passing by prey or at night they go on the prowl. So any natural rock structure or sudden drops in lake depth is where you'd find them. Let's do this. Come on, fish. Just need one fish for it to be a day. Five, four, three, two, one, pop, and bring it in slowly. Fish on. Yes, we got a fish. Yep. Doesn't feel too big. Doesn't feel too big, but we definitely have a fish on. Actually feels pretty small. Let's see what we got here. Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, that's a baby pike. Okay, cool. Well, it's barely hooked. Other thing I forgot to mention, a glove. You need a glove. Maybe I mentioned it. I prefer my mother-in-law's gardening gloves. Makes it easy to grab the fish. This one is very small. Okay, it's gonna thrash. Woo! Okay, come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay, I have the net, but I don't need the net for this guy. Here we go. Here we go, Pike. And breaking every rule I've said here. Now let's just see those teeth in the mouth. Can't really see the gill stuff, but okay. Off you go. Boom! Fish! That's a small one. We're in the spot that has the big ones. We're gonna go again. But now you've seen glove. The pliers, I didn't need them because it was only hooked in the lip. Pinched in barb, easy to remove. Without three trebles, it doesn't mangle up the fish when you catch it. It's just that easy. Booyah. Let's keep going. I'm just gonna back up a little bit. Well, now it doesn't even matter if we get skunked for the rest of the afternoon. I only had a half an hour anyhow to do this but pike are amazing. They are difficult to fillet because they have something called an extra Y bone on their ribs and it's difficult to eat. You have to know how to fillet it. There's videos online as to how to fillet a pike. I have never been able to learn how to do it. And uh, that's it. Awesome sport fish to catch. People like to eat them apparently. I prefer bass because pike tend to smell a little fishy and they're difficult to clean, and they are very slimy to handle. But they are big and they've got a lot of meat on them if you know how to fillet them properly. But my goodness, they're aggressive fish. No. And uh, pretty easy to catch and fun to catch. Especially for young kids who want to get terrified at the, what they, I think they call them slow sharks. When you catch a big pike and then you realize you've been swimming uh, and sometimes skinny dipping in water with fish that big, with teeth that sharp, that are that aggressive. Yeah, it can uh, can make you think twice about things. One thing I forgot, that you absolutely need, depending on your jurisdiction, a fishing license. Get your fishing license. Figure it out because they can be notoriously um, punitive if you don't have oh, a fishing license as in seizing and confiscating all of your fishing stuff, your boat, potentially even your car, depending on the applicable laws where you are. Uh, and depending on your applicable laws, you have to have the license on your persons while fishing, as in in your tackle box. It cannot be in your car. Wow, that's dangerous. Um, it cannot be in your car. And as far as the net goes, you want to get one of those nets that has sort of fatter rubber mesh and not the nylon ones because it's much less damaging to the fish's uh, skin and the mucus on the skin of the fish. So they have 
more expensive ones, unfortunately, that are easier on the fish to handle them. Sometimes some of those nylon ones, when the fish thrashes around in the net, uh, they get those nylon, thin nylon mesh things stuck in the fish and it cuts up its skin. And if you rub off the mucus on a fish's skin or, or cause abrasions to it, it can get infected in the water. So uh, smaller holes in the net and rubber, rubber uh, material which typically translates into a more expensive net, unfortunately, but... All right, I think that might be about it for the day. Oh, oh, or is it? Boom, no. Oh, there's a, there is a, the, hold on, there's a halo around the, the sun. Hold on, I'll show you that after I pull this in. I can see the halo, halo. I can see it's halo. Okay. Righteous. Righteous, I think they call them a sun dog. Check this out. Right up there. Yeah, there you can see it. Beautiful. Thus ends the uh, Viva Fry uh, pike fishing tutorial. Tune in next time for more fishing. Peace.